Welcome to part two of this video series on building my dream home. I uh, hope you guys really like this series. If you do, make sure you hit the like button, share it on your social media platforms, it really helps me out. Plus it might benefit other people. So I wanna talk about how we were able to find this piece of land. Um, and so regardless if you wanna build a dream house for yourself or if you want to find land to develop and make money, um, you know, this is how we did it. So uh, hope you guys enjoy the content and here we go, let's do this. Hi, my name is Zach Booth and I help people just like you consistently find massively discounted properties all across the country so you can fix and flip, buy and hold, or wholesale real estate. If you need help, I have a ton of free resources, including an absolutely free wholesaling course. Click on the link in the show notes to get access to those free resources, or you can go to dfdmastery.com, click on free resources, and get access to all the free content. So this is, this is the piece of land. I've got about 107, 107 feet of frontage here. Uh, and then it goes back about 250 feet or so. And then I've actually got an elbow. So it's like an L-shaped lot. So I've got a section that goes clear back there, almost 300 feet. Um, as you can see from the views as well, uh, one of the reasons I picked this area is I absolutely love the mountains. And so you can see from, from the views that I've got, I've got this mountain and then I've got the mountain um, over the front of the, the house as well. So the views are fantastic. So uh, the reason I ended up with this piece of land is uh, my wife and I were looking at the different school districts, where we wanted to end up, where we wanted to live, and we, we pinpointed a couple different uh, little suburbs outside of the main area. So my office is only like uh, seven minutes away. I have to take two stoplights, zero freeways. Uh, so it's, it's perfect for what we want. It's close to everything. It's a little bit quieter. Um, and so what we did is we picked this city, we handpicked the city for the school district, for the location um, and everything else. And then I just got online and I started looking for empty land. I started just looking, where is there fields? Where, where is there space between houses that it might have enough frontage to build a house? Um, so then I just started door knocking. It was my third night of door knocking and I, I pulled up and saw this lot. And as you can tell, there's a house there and a house there but just open dirt, just a little shed in the back. Um, so what I, what I did is I started, uh, you know, I have the Deal Machine app. I teach people how to find off-market discounted properties. I found out who owned the property and uh, I found out the guy that owned it just lives about five houses down. And looking at, at what he owned and uh, all the different lots, I found out he owned about eight or nine acres or so around here. And so I went and knocked on his door. He was there working in his yard. And I, I said, hey, I would love to buy some land for you if you're interested in selling. And he says, you can't afford it. That was his response. And my response was, I probably can't, but I'd love to get to know you regardless. And we chatted for a couple hours. I asked him about his land, you know, how long he'd owned it. Um, you know, I noticed that he had a garden. We talked about gardening and I shared why I wanted the piece of land for myself, my family, and just chatted. After about a couple hours of talking, uh, he said, actually, I have about an acre I'll sell you. And we came down here, he showed me this piece of land that I originally looked at that I was interested in, um, and told me he would sell me a portion of this land. So as you can see on your screen right now, here's a screenshot of the, the actual section. So the interesting thing, this is not a subdivision that I picked up a lot and I'm gonna build my house on it like most people do. The reason I chose not to do that, the reason I went after raw land, is a lot of times these subdivisions are part of an HOA, a homeowners association. And in those, there's regulations on the type of house you can build, how many garages you can have. You can only have like a two or a three car garage. You can't have a pool, sometimes you can. Uh, and a lot of the times you only can pick out of like five different house plans. And then you only can, you know, have certain types of siding. You really can't pick uh, what finishes you have in the house, the design of your house. It's not truly a custom home at that, that point. You're basically just picking carpet and paint 
And if I wanted to do that, I would just pick up a fixer upper and do it myself, right? So I wanted to be able to build my dream home exactly how we wanted it. So I found this raw piece. Once we, we had someone that was willing to sell it to us, then I had to go through the process of figuring out what zoning laws are. So to be able to build a house on a piece of land, you have to follow certain processes. So there's something called a zoning map. Every city across the country has this map. So if you're curious about the zoning rules or about a piece of land, what you can build there according to local law, you can search zoning map for your city. And you'll pull it up and it's all color coordinated. And you'll be able to see what, what uh, you know, your piece of land, where it, where it hits in that color scheme and there's a key. So this was zoned residential low density. So it was like R-L. And it, you know, I looked at the key, it said residential low density. So what does residential low density mean? I had no idea, right? Because it, depending on the city you live in, that might mean something else. So then you have to then look up zoning law codes um, in your city. And every city has all that online, or you can go to your city planner and look up that information. So I just got online and I found out what the zoning laws were for residential low density. And what the zoning laws were is I had to have, I had to have roughly 0.78 acres to be able to build a house on it, to build a single family home. Um, I could only build a single family home in that zoning. Uh, I had to have um, like 90 feet of frontage which I had like 107, so I was good. And then it had setback rules. So from the front of the street to, or from the street or curb, we don't have curb and gutter here, but from the street to the front of the house, to the building had to be 30 feet. It has to be 30 feet from the back as well. Obviously it doesn't have to hit exactly that, but 30 feet away or further. And then the side setbacks is 10 feet. So that then gives me the footprint of what I can build or what I cannot build. Once I figured out that yes, I can build something here, I knew it was worth then paying an engineer to have, um, have it platted essentially. So that engineer then goes in and does a survey. It's basically a land survey where he writes out um, in a language I don't understand or want to learn <laughs> the exact codes and numbers and lot latitude and longitude for the exact lines for my, um, for my lot. I can then take that to the title company. They can then prepare the documents for us to be able to close on that portion of the land. Um, but before I'm going to close on this piece of land, so now I have to go to the city and show them everything that I have and every city will have a list of things that's required to give you approval to build a house, right? So you're essentially developing a whole subdivision. Like it doesn't matter if you're doing a whole entire subdivision or you're doing one single lot, the process is the exact same. So I'm basically going through the process of approving a subdivision, but this is a subdivision of one house, right? Is essentially what I'm doing. So once I put together all that information, I'm going to go to the city and get approved to be able to build this house. My hope and expectation is I can find a general contractor that's gonna oversee a lot of the build for me. Um, I obviously have subcontractors and people that do you know, flips and, and I have connections to get pricing very low. So I wanna get a contractor that allows me to bring in my own subs and then he'll sub out the portions that I don't have contract or subcontractors for. Um, but that'll allow me to save some money, but I also don't have to do all of it myself. So I'm hoping that general contractor also will help me by working with the city and having this subdivision approved and to be able to get building uh, licenses from the city. So that's where we're at with this beautiful piece of land. I'm so very excited. Uh, there's so many things that I can do with this piece of land. Our expectation at this point is to build our home. Uh, we'll show you our house plans and, and everything that we're working towards. We wanna have a pool in the back and um, we'll be able to have this back corner section. Uh, eventually I want to have a shop uh, for more toys and as well as eventually have some horses because I love the mountains and as I get older, 
I won't be able to carry everything on my back like I do now and pack around with 100 pounds on my back. So a horse is definitely an option to be able to put a horse here as well. So super excited about this. Hopefully you guys learned a few things. Um, you know, go in and practice this. If, if, you're, if you're actively, proactively looking for discounted properties, you're gonna come across deals where you're gonna find a house where the, the seller is selling the house and the land with it. And understanding what you can do with that land or when you, what you cannot do with that land, you're going to make way more money by understanding zoning laws. I made an extra $50,000 on a deal because a garbage lot that was not worth anything because it didn't have enough frontage, I only had to add five feet of frontage and I could have a duplex lot. So I learned that I could do a lot line adjustment, take a portion of the house lot and put it over into this one because I own both of them and I turned a zero dollar lot into a $50,000 lot just because I understood zoning law and regulations, right? And so these kinds of things will make you more money as you're out finding discounted properties. Okay, so come with me. So I have to do, like I said, a 30 foot section. So this doesn't have curb and gutter. So I found out from the city, they have to hold curb and gutter money in escrow just in case they eventually want to put curb and gutter in here, which is such a joke, right? Imagine that you have someone like a company that says, maybe one day we'll give you a service and add something. We're going to take your money now, but no guarantee that you'll ever have anything. That's just the government and how they work. Pretty ridiculous. So uh, anyways, that's just a rant and a complaint about how this stuff works. So I'll have curb and gutter and escrow, um, but I'm 30 feet back. So I'm probably going to be roughly right here. We'll be able to be the front of my house. Uh, we're going to be 10 foot. 10 foot from this side uh, will be the start of the house. We'll have our front garage here. Uh, we'll pull into the one garage. We'll have the extra deep one car garage down here. We'll have about 30 feet to this far side here uh, with a side parking area for my trailer. Um, and the, the single car garage will be big enough for a boat and my truck and my four wheeler. So I'm really excited about that space. And then back here, if you keep coming, so the back of the house is going to be roughly around here. Uh, that's just eyeballing it, but it's going to be roughly around here. We're going to have uh, probably another 10 feet of pavers or some type of decoration out the back of the house. And then we're going to have the swimming pool. Um, and then I own a big section that way. So all this back here will just be landscaped. Uh, I wanna put in a, sp a sports court eventually with a basketball standard and uh, play basketball with my son, which would be super fun. And then this back section right back here, I want to fence off um, to be able to eventually have a horse. But I want my kids to be able to, you know, have chickens and collect the eggs and maybe have a goat to play with because they're super cute. Um, but I'm just really excited about this space. I'm excited about the freedom that real estate's provided for me and also the skill set um, of, of acquiring and finding these properties and understanding zoning laws and how they function. So um, anyways, I hope you like the stuff. Let me know what you think. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. Leave us a comment if you have any other questions or things you'd like me to cover. I'm always happy to help. I'll see you on the next video.